We have with us today the, well, Al Haji Abdul Karim Mohammed. Thank you very much for agreeing to speak with us today. My and pleasure. Yes. It's, this for us is a, is a foray into, to go beyond what we have been looking at in the Filmmakers Forum this past years. Uh, there are various, we tend to talk about Nollywood, but actually the Nigerian film industry is bigger than Nollywood. We have thriving sectors like Kanyewood, like the Yoruba filmmaking industry and various other sectors of the film industry. And well, in this and other, in some subsequent sessions that we're going to have, we're going to try to explore a little bit to find out a bit more about what's going on in these other sectors, which are thriving. And this is why we have with us today, Al Haji Abdul Karim Mohammed, who has graciously agreed to speak with us and share his wealth of information. Now, Al Haji Abdul Karim Mohammed is a filmmaker and media consultant. He's the MD of Moving Image Limited. He's also the founder of the Kanu Indigenous Languages Film Market and Festival. It's, a, it's an annual event which serves as the platform to promote excellence and professionalism of African films and those who make them. Al Haji Mohammed started his career as a television producer with the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. He established his film production company, Moving Image Limited, in 1991. He was also the pioneer president of the Motion Picture Practitioners Association of Nigeria, MOPAN, and is currently the chairman of the board of trustees of that association. He's known for his films such as Wai Waye Adon Tafia, pardon me if I massacre the name, which was the first house of them shot on pneumatic tape format the broadcast standard at that time. His second film, Al Haki Wikuyo, was shot on Betacam SP format and became the first Nigerian film to be shot on a dual sound system, combining camera and Niagara sound recording. The film won the best sound award at the National, at the National Film Festival. He has produced and or directed several other films, including the first Hausa Igbo collaboration film, Dam Adam Butulu, which we will talk about. Al Haji Abdul Karim Mohammed has over 400 titles to his credit, which include both television and radio programs. One of his creations is a long running television program, Mu Koma Gona. Let us go to the farm, which is credited with driving up farming practices in Kano and Jigawa State. Al Haji uh, Mohammed is a consultant for the National Film Institute in Jos. He holds a bachelor's degree in communications, specializing in radio television film from Indiana State University. And he has a master's degree in mass communications from Bayero University, Kano. He has attended courses at the Agricultural and Management Training Institute in Loring, International Professional Development Institute, Washington, and also Brighton Polytechnic, England. And we can see that the profile of Al Haji Mohammed is pretty heavy. So once again, welcome, Al Haji. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you very much, Doctor. Well, Al Haji Mohammed, let us start with our first question here. You have been in Kanyewood from virtually the very beginning. Uh, so I think that you are, if I may use the expression, you're one of the backbone of Kanyewood. Can you give us some idea of those beginnings? Well, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Ikechuku. I can assure you that uh, the beginning of Kaniwood is loaded with uh, history and with, is loaded with mysteries because uh, Kaniwood, as it is the industry, the Hausa movie industry is referred to, is uh, a child of circumstance, I will say, because uh, nobody can precisely say that he or she has yes. predicted the level of success Kanyewood is going to record so far. And uh, nobody will claim credit to saying that I am the one that sat down to map out the strategy for 
Kani would be where it is today. But uh, looking at the mysteries and the <laughs> ironies of life uh, around in Kaniwood, I think uh, one of the most important certain roles for the industry of Kaniwood is the international, first international conference on house happenings that was held in 2003. Because it is at that time that the industry had what I will say, an intellectual foundation that could lay its own historic path for the nation and indeed the world to see and appreciate. Because arising from that uh, conference, uh, there was a publication that was made. And uh, I want to believe that even Nollywood cannot brag of having something like this. This is the product of that uh, international conference. It produced a book that today stands as the encyclopedia of Kaniwood. And the title of the book is Hausa Home Videos, Technology, Economy, and Society. Because the initiators of this project, by the way, the book is edited by Professor Abdullah Oba Adamu and uh, Professor Yusuf Adamu and Professor Umar Farouk Jibril. So three professors were those that edited this book. But it comprises papers that were presented, about 58 papers across what Kaniwood was as at 2003. But before 2003, I will say that there were some efforts at creating uh, a sort of product around uh, Kaniwood. And uh, I want to say that without any fear of contradiction, based on available records, the coinage of Kaniwood was prompted and promoted by Sanusi Shehudaneji in 1990. And let us remember that Nollywood was coined only in 1992. In the second instance, based on this intellectual base on intellectual assumptions, it was realized that Nollywood, uh, Kaniwood began as far back as 1980 with efforts to see how this is done. However, the products that were produced from 1980 to 1984 were not good enough commercially speaking. But four films were identified as the openers for that uh, time period. And the first film that was recorded is titled, I'll give you the titles in Hausa because they are all Hausa films. Uh, the first one is Hukuma Magani Mbanza, which means authority can thoroughly deal with miscreants. And then the second one was uh, Endokar Amaria. Endokar Amaria, they are people that were known as uh, miscreants that were causing havoc all over uh, Kano. And then the third one is Aurandoli, which means uh, marriage of force. A girl or a boy may not be interested in a girl and they, they are forced into marriage. And then the fourth one is Bakar India. Bakar India, even from the name, that is Black Indian. And what these four films have done for us in terms of analysis, if you look at uh, the first one, Hukuma Maganing Mbanza is solely around a Chinese film genre that was developed because the Hausa person was oh, exposed to foreign films because there were no local films at that time. And the fourth one, Bakar India also is as a result of an, a, an exposure to Indian films. So it's made up of songs, dances from originating from India. In essence, what that showed to us was that the first genre of films that uh, emanated from Kaniwood, 50% were borrowed uh, medium, one from China and the other from India. 
then the rest two are indigenous. The key thing for us to appreciate is that the influence of foreign farms has had a deep rooted uh, position from the formation stage of Hausa uh, home videos. And that is probably what's made it on collision course with the rest of society. And that is what <clears throat> engineered academicians to now see the interface between the society and this new medium that is trying to portray films in Hausa language. That is the key finding of uh, that initial stage. But as for me personally, I have argued severally that when we were in NTA by 1980, NTA Kano was celebrating its fourth year anniversary. And uh, Muhammad, uh, Zachary Muhammad produced a film titled Kobili Yakari, which means a monkey, even with a broken uh, limb, can cause havoc. That's the title of the film. What has that uh, film done? Yes, it was a television show, but it had an extended time period of uh, broadcast, four, year, four hours of showing. And the NTA at that time, we normally close by 12 uh, midnight. And usually the last three hours from about 9 a.m. to 12 midnight, it will be an Indian movie that will be shown. But this day that we were celebrating the fourth year of NTA Kano, that film Kobili Yakari was shown. Now, there are some critical uh, sort of knowledge and information that came out of that four hour show television drama. Basically in NTA programming, we used to have 30 minutes drama or one hour maximum of any indigenous language uh, showing. But it is the Indian films that are shown that will break it to two hours or three hours. Now here came this house of film that was shown for four hours and the station that day did not close until 2 a.m. And we realized that people were awake from the time they started showing that film up to the end. And we were inundated in NTA Kano to repeat that program. Continuously, the phone lines of NTA were ringing, saying we need that drama to be rebroadcast. And it had to be done. So one thing that professionals were made to understand was that indeed, a Hausa story can be extended to such length of period of showing. And people will be interested in watching Hausa films. But because we were comfortably employed as professionals, and we had no mo mo commercial motivation to get into production, even though we realized this thing, we were, not, we, we were suffering from this inertia of being comfortable at where we were. So nobody ventured into the project. But I want to believe that that was the first thing that really gingered our artists because those that have initiated these films are generally the artists that we were uh, using in our own dramas in NTA that emerged as people that promoted Kaniwood in the first instance. So I want to believe that the, the, the foundation for Kaniwood to take up in terms of producing home movies must have got its own root from that uh, Kobili Yakari drama of NTA Kan. This is one point that I want to make. Now, coming back to 2003, when that uh, first uh, international conference on house films was uh, held in Kano. It held from 4th August to 7th August and uh, so many papers were presented and the result was what I showed you earlier. Arising from that, Professor Abdullah Oba Adam, I still will recall what he said after the conference and I'm quoting him now. He is saying of Kaniwood that it has the potentials of a giant buried in a tiny acorn. This is his one, how he captured what that uh, meant to him in terms of Hausa home movies. Another professor that participated at the time was uh, mm -hmm. Professor Bashir uh, Ali of uh, Kaduna State uh, University. 
In his own submission, he said, the introduction of Hausa home movies in the North is perhaps the most important economic development that has happened in the area in the last two decades. This summarizes what Kanye Wood means. And if I can expatiate, based on the submissions of these scholars, these uh, persons that are, have been studying the phenomenon now known as Kanye Wood, truly shows that Kanye Wood has the potential to be great. But unfortunately, it is the devil with so many things that has shrouded its own success, either to be recognized at home or outside. outside. And that is why projects like uh, Project Act Nollywood, if you see the quantum of money that were disbursed as grants grant to filmmakers in Nigeria, Kanye Wood did not have a fair deal of that uh, magnanimous action of the federal government of Nigeria. Why? Because it is grossly underrated. But even as at 2003, it was realized that 850 films were produced from Kanye Wood as at that time. And what qualified Nigeria to be among the top uh, movie producers of the world is a little over 2,000 titles. So an industry that has an input been injected into the whole sum with such sheer number of uh, films being underrated, not to be accorded its rightful uh, share of a national cake, if you would like to call it that way, is uh, the, uh, the, 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 the result of what is bedeviling the industry. And you may recall that in 2011, the Kano state government of the time came out to pronounce that there will be, it is illegal for anybody to produce film in Kano state, to screen film in cinemas in Kano state, to sell films in Kano state. Now, this is part of the challenges because when you look at the situation where Kano operates, let me back up a little bit to now explain why Kanye Wood. A Kanye Wood is because it's pre predominantly Hausa movies that uh, it produces. The hub of the industry is in Kano because Kano enjoys a marketing uh, point kind of uh, place for centuries because the trans sub 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 saharan trade uh, routes uh, terminates in Kano. And the goods that, and services that are transported between Kano to Tripoli uh, travel upwards to North Africa and into Europe from Kano. So that is what, what Kanye Wood has enjoyed because it is using Hausa language to produce its own movies to now uh, interject. Yeah. Go yeah, let me, let, let me interrupt you there for a moment, please. Uh, this, I, I, I want to develop a bit more this aspect of distribution, because I, I think it's correct to say that outside of the northern part of the country, there is a wide ignorance about the products of Kanye Wood. Because I think if you speak to quite a few people here down in other parts of the country, they probably have not watched any of the Kanye Wood films. And some people perhaps may not even know how to access them. So you're talking now about the kind of distribution that they exist. Can you tell us really, focusing now on the products of Kanyewood, what exactly is the distribution structure? What are the platforms where these films are distributed? And what is a targeted audience? A very, very interesting question, Doctor. And uh, I think uh, first, for one to appreciate the distribution system of uh, Kanye Wood movies, he needs to understand the language of Hausa in the first instance. Mm -hmm. 
There is no Nigerian language that enjoys uh, patronage, if I may call it, foreign patronage of the language, not promoted by the language users, but external persons more than Hausa. Because Voice of America has a Hausa section. BBC has a Hausa section. Deutsche Welle has a Hausa section. Uh, Radio Cairo, Radio Beijing, Radio uh, across the world, you know, Hausa service is being offered. That is one to demonstrate that any person that is getting into production of Kanyewood movies has already had a clear base upon which he can travel with his own goods. To those, this, this language, linguistic catchment areas that Hausa language has already been promoted to. So probably that is why the attraction for a Hausa film producer to now do a subtitle does not uh, attract him because he feels that if he produces in Hausa language alone, there is an estimated uh, 70 million or thereabout Hausa speakers across nations, you know, in the world. And there are many uh, Hausa in diaspora in all these places where they have decided to promote the language in terms of uh, radio broadcasting, especially. And uh, even now with the television and uh, uh, satellite uh, broadcasting systems, Hausa language pro programs are being promoted and they have a space that they can distribute and get their source of income from there. So that is why I think the distribution pattern is such that yes, you identify this, uh, the, 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 the audience you are talking about, this is the way you identify them because uh, with the opening of these broadcast networks that are promoting the language, it, it shows that Hausa speakers are in those places and you can target them. And how goods now travel Kano, if you know what the Kano, Kano is a trade center by itself. What happens is along the belts where Hausa is spoken outside the country, people move goods and services across this sub-Saharan trade, uh, trade route even today. So when they come in to buy whatever commodity they usually trade in, they sort of absorb the Hausa films and put them as part of what they will be presenting wherever they are going. So it's like Kanyewood films have already made routes and already made, made markets and marketers that move these goods of uh, the industry across uh, nations. So this is the, 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 the reality of the situation. However, when the industry demonstrated itself as a GDP uh, mover, the marketers, the local marketers, and majority of the marketers that, that are marketing Hausa films have no any knowledge of modern things. A majority of them have not, are not even lettered. So what they have done is they now realize, identified those that move goods and services and created a niche for themselves to make sure that they are selling those goods, the house films to those people, those merchants, and they have developed a relationship with them. So if, by the time they move these goods once, two, two, two times, and the popularity of the films at where they have taken them to have proved that they are a, a, a product that they, they can be able to sell, it became very easy for them to have a direct link with these people. And as at that time, when you produce a film, you surrender the master of your film to these marketers and they will be responsible for making the copies that time on VHS to now sell to these guys. Because there is no way for you to know how many of your films have been dubbed into these uh, tapes and sold, you are at their mercy. It is when what they declare to you that you get. So it is these marketers that we are benefiting more than the filmmaker in terms of the marketing and distribution system that was on the ground. And even when DVD uh, came about, you now produce 
as a producer, you produce the number of films that you want on DVD, you deliver to these marketers, and you are their mercy to now take your own and dub. They will be selling their own and your own will be on the shelf. So even though there is this marketing system, there is this loophole that have uh, sort of uh, deprived the legal intellectual property owner from benefiting from that system. Doctor, this is my take. Yes. Uh, if I may just add to that, because I know that I have spoken with with some Kennywood film producers, and also something I have read indicates that people are finding other platforms away from these marketers. I know that some people are using the YouTube channels, and then I have a I have a comment here from Ken Day who says that a few persons of Kennywood have made it to Netflix. Lately, and also an African magic channel is dedicated to Kennywood on uh, GoTV and DSTV. <laughs> so I think people are finding other uh, platforms. Uh, the aspect of being in the mainstream, I think, is a key one. But let me go back a little bit to something you said earlier. You were talking about some influences on the Kennywood film in those early days. And this is actually reflected in the way various authors have described Kennywood films. They describe them as being characterized by being almost exclusively in the Hausa language with the trademark of Islam and drawing inspiration from Bollywood. Now, you were referring to those films of the early days. Would you agree that this, is, this has marked for always the Kennywood film? And do you think that there's room for experimentation and the development of other features beyond these ones? Yes, certainly. Uh, the, the, there was an interim research that was conducted by Professor Abdullah uh, Adamu that uh, brought to fore what you have said, Doctor. What, uh, when I was the president of Motion Picture Practitioners Association, I just spoke to him as a friend and said, now that I have assumed the leadership of this uh, important uh, organization, what can we do to assess the level of the practitioner so that we know if we want to initiate intervening programs, what can, what can that be? And based on his own interim assessment, one, he said to me that out of the 4,000 identified practitioners as at that time, only five had tertiary level of education. And the influence that you have said, he now said majority of those that are in full control of the industry were youth that were born between the year of uh, 1963 to about 7072. And to him, he said, Radio Kaduna, which was the premier radio station in Northern Nigeria because it was covering all Northern states. In fact, it has extended to some West African countries is a culprit of promoting Indian songs and movies. And these kids that were born during that time, acculturation has taken place with them. That is why their frame of reference when they came into the industry is Indian movie rather than Hausa movie because there was no Hausa movie. So you can see that as far as that information is concerned, if you expose a person to certain things, at an early age, when he grows up, that is what will be manifesting in what he does. And that is the, uh, the, the, the reality of the situation as at the time. So what we did was, uh, I'm very happy to see that Professor Hegenius Ikwazi uh, has joined us. I took this problem to him and said, look, you are the person in charge of the uh, Film Developmental Agency in Nigeria. This is my problem, what can we do? He said, what do you want me to do? I want you to back a training program that will sensitize people to bring them back home so that we can sensitize them to appreciate 
that they need to be who they are first before they imbibe other person's culture. And he has helped us through that, uh, uh, his own support to embark on large scale training programs. I, I remember the first time we trained people from Kanyewood, he sent in people from National Film Institute and we trained about 95 of those people incorporating the, the, the sort of frame of reference that they ought to have as Nigerians not to have foreign based uh, frame of reference. And I think largely there has been success in that regard because many of the productions started to reflect Nigerianness rather than Indianness or Chineseness or Americanness. I think no matter how marginal that uh, success is, that is what I think has uh, resulted in redressing some of the issues that you have raised. Okay, thank you. Now, talking about uh, Professor Ekwazi, he has a question here. He says, about origin and distribution, how do you relate Galadima's Soyaya to the origin of Kaniwood and to the problems of distribution of the House of Film nationwide? <laughs> I'm not surprised that Prof asked this question because yes, uh, Soyaya Kuna Rzuchi, that's the title of the film, that was produced in 1986 by the Nigerian Film Corporation. USA Galadinma was the director of that film and he happened to be a common friend of ours. And uh, what we used that project when he, he, they needed some artists from Kanu was to say Galadinma was passionate about saying film is not theory, film is practical. So now that we have a project in our hands that has been fully funded by the Nigerian Film Corporation. Can we incorporate these players so that we show them practically how film is done? And I think that is one of the major pro uh, profit of that project. It may not be commercially uh, successful because it wasn't. And it is due to the problem he has mentioned, distribution. We were settled with the fact that Quality film was done using the state of the arts uh, facility that Nigerian Film Corporation had, which was the beta cam. So you, nobody could have beaten it. And we, we, we the, the, the film was shot on dual sound as well. Uh, we used Ni Niagara to record the, the audio and then the video with the beta cam system. So there was a good uh, product, but we could not see ourselves surrendering the master of such an important film to the distributor in the name of making money. We were thinking we are going to be shortchanged and therefore the distribution listing, we said, look, let us see how we can be able to, the, 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 the Yoruba moving theater has set a, a sort of, uh, shall I say a template that one we, can, we could ride on Therefore, Galadima decided, I shot the Alaki film, he shot the uh, Soeya Kuna Rzuchi. So we said, let us take it around ourselves and show the film. But I can tell you, it was a commercial flop. What, what, what we enjoyed, you know, as artists was the fact that we could gauge the acceptance of the audience of what we have to present, but the money was not there for us to smile to the bank or even look at another project to say we are generating another project out of what we have done. So that was the sad, stark reality of uh, these two projects, Alaki and, uh, and uh, Soeya Kuna Zuchi. And basically, these were the two projects that offered Kaniwood the opportunity to see how professional films are made. Because USA Galadima spent about 13 years in Los Angeles after graduating uh, from the university, practicing before he joined the NFC. So we were sharing this commonality of passion to see how we can be able to, 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 to survive using our own skills and trainings, but uh, the bottleneck of distribution uh, sort of scuffled that dream for us. Okay, well, still on distribution, uh, Musing has given us a clarification. He says that there's no canny wood on Netflix yet, that there are perhaps house of films or films set in the north. However, none of them 
belongs to Kennywood film industry. And I think this, this is also linked to the fact that in the cinemas also, you don't find Kennywood film. And the exhibition of films via the cinema has a long history in the North. Because even when the cinemas down south had collapsed, you still had some that were functioning in the north. But right now, there are only 10, at least the ones that are noted as well established, there are only 10 in the north. And eight of them are in Abuja, one in Kanu, one in Adamawa. Now, is this why Kanuwood filmmakers do not make films for the cinema? Or is this a problem of funding? Or as you have indicated earlier, is it just that, okay, people are remaining in their comfort zones. We have already an established audience and those are the ones we are targeting solely. Well, a, a bit of all, I will say. Uh, in the first, first instance, yes, uh, the quality of Kanyewood films for cinema showing is growing, is right now at its own infant stage because the budget of productions is still very low. It cannot uh, uh, compete with Nollywood, certainly not. But uh, for those that have ventured into it, the, the, the secret has, uh, I think uh, it's a learning curve. Uh, I could remember when I was discussing with uh, Kene of uh, film one, he said to me that uh, a film by Alinuhu was leading, as I did, I think about two, three years ago, was the leading film as at that time in terms of box office, uh, uh, this thing, what do you call it? Revenue. So, yeah. and uh, I asked him what was the secret that he was able to make it. He said, yes, when his film was showing at the day of the premiere, he was physically there and he advertised that I'm going to be there. You come in there, you see me and you see my movie, that it made a huge difference. But by the next day showing, he was there, Kenny was there, Ali was not there. And he saw that the ticket sale was nowhere comparable to the pre previous day. He quickly put a phone, phone call through to Ali Nuhu, look, you are, being here yesterday was magical. And we need that magical touch for today's sales to go up. And he said, when Ali Nuhu came into the place, the sales went up appreciably. So in other words, there is no one way that uh, one can guarantee success when you don't have a good product, when you don't have a pro promotional backing that will be associated with the staff, for example. And that is when I really considered the fact that once you have a star in your film, yes, that star can be able to sell your film. Because here was a star that made his own film and he was uh, attracting people to come and watch it. In terms of alternative means, yes, YouTube is probably now the, the darling of uh, Kennywood producers. No matter what, they are making money because Adam Smith, the world acclaimed economist said, man is a rational being. He will continue to be doing something so long as it remains profitable. And since they have remained doing it, I have not done it, but they have, they, they, they have gone to YouTube and they are increasing rather than decreasing. It shows that it's paying them off. And then this first instance that I have talked about, yes, there is traditional way of moving the products of Kennywood that is still viable and I think they are pursuing it as an option. That's my take. Okay, thank you. I have another question here from, from Kende. And well, I would like to link it to the work that you have done, because you have done quite a bit of work in terms of development. You have developmental radio programs, and I think also some of your films are in that regard. So this, uh, it's also tied to the question of the influences for films. 
And this is now what what kind of stories are told? Okay, what kind of stories are told? And Kenda is asking along those lines that how can film be used to curb extremism in Nigeria? How can film be used to curb extremism? Well, uh, I'm a communication strategy specialist. And once you are designing a communication strategy, all options will be explored based on the audience you are targeting. Because there is no one message for all audiences. Usually there is a message for an audience. So once you identify that audience, certainly carving out extremism can be done using film. And that is the essence of Ariwa 24. Ariwa 24 was funded by the CIA to intervene in religious extremism in, in the North. And uh, I think they are achieving results because they are engaging the youth through the medium and the medium has turned out to be very popular with the youth. And their messaging is getting to the right people that are being conscripted into the insurgency uh, phenomena that we are com being confronted with. So for any uh, intervention program that wants to consider film as a source of fighting extremism, I will be more than uh, happy to say yes is the right course to go because uh, the products that we are being churned out either by Nollywood or Kanyewood or whatever wood we are talking about goes to mainly the youth and they are, these are the active uh, participants in insurgency issues so once you can target your messaging properly and directing it to the right audience of course you should be able to achieve results once you are efficient in what you will do. This is my take. Okay, thank you. Along those lines, Nazif is, uh, I mean, focusing now on the, on the themes that you find in, in films. Nazif is asking, he said, way back, we all believe Kanyewood uh, is doing that, sorry, that the filmmakers of Kanyewood are doing their best in terms of reviving the house of heritage, most especially the Raonia film, then why is it different now? All that we see these days are love movies. How can we advocate for sanity in the industry? Very, very interesting question from Nazir. You see, if you trace back the acceptance of house society of what the term as film, it goes back to television days, actually. From the time Kanye Wood hit the ground running, people realized that they are getting into their homes, getting into the minds of their children. It has been a problem for, for Kanye Wood. And that is what led to the burning of the production, production and sale of film in Kano State, for example, because there were too many complaints that these films that are being churned out are not representative of the Hausa culture and Hausa people. The dressing mode, the language pattern, and the invasion of privacy. My film, Alaki, was excused as the first film that invaded the privacy enjoyed by the Hausa people when they are watching uh, media entertainment program because here was a scene that was uh, created where a groom took the bride on his hands and took her to the bedroom. This was the first time that such invasion of the house person privacy in terms of media entertainment is concerned that has happened because this has been captured by intellectuals that have as studying this phenomena of film as it relates to the house of society. And I could remember Professor Abdullah Obadamu had a friend who was 
teaching Hausa in University of Tehran in Iran, who requested him to buy his latest Hausa films and send to them so that he can use to teach his students in, in, in Iran. And the response he had from that person was the majority of the students rejected those films as non Hausa films because they were more Indian than Hausa. So the subject matter is love. The uh, projection is that of dance and love does it. And the Hausa man cannot go when he's uh, dating a lady to now say, I'm singing for you in the name of dating you. It doesn't happen in the society. And but the, 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 the house of films have turned it into the house of general. So Nazipi, I think that is the, the problem that we have heard. In terms of advocating sanity, nothing can be done beyond educating people, sensitizing them to appreciate what they need to do right. And being a filmmaker really comes with a, uh, a, a social responsibility that is bestowed on the filmmaker to ensure that he safeguards, that he treats with care, and that is honest too. And these are the areas that I think sensitization and education will be the advocacy uh, points that can be taken to the filmmaker so that they can be able to change. Thank you. Well, Nasiru has given us a clarification. He says Arewa 24 was established by was established by Equal Access International with the support of the US Department of State. Thank you for that clarification. I have a question here from Lucien, Dr. Lucien, who says Nigerian video films are patterned along ethnic lines. But with proper subtitling, Nigerian video films produced in Igbo, Yoruba, or Hausa, and any other Nigerian indigenous video films will receive better reception from audience. What are the challenges facing Kanywood for not paying keen attention to proper subtitling in English? Incidentally, my film festival is specifically designed to promote and reward excellence in producing African indigenous language films. And uh, what uh, Dr. Olusion has uh, brought to fore is part of the uh, need that we have seen because we have heard papers that were presented that address this particular issue. And mind you, I have said that as far back as 2001, when I was the president of MOPAN, out of 4,000 practitioners, only five had tertiary level of education. And that is really manifesting in the subtitling of House Films, because nobody can give you what he doesn't have. And because of budgetary constraints, a filmmaker will know that he cannot be able to do a subtitling effectively. He will nonetheless say, I'm going to do it myself because I can speak a small Turanchi and I understand House which doesn't work. So that is why there is this huge problem about subtitling. And I understand now, because I have just uh, finished producing a, a television series, uh, one season of a television series, and I want to subtitle it. When I said, let them bring somebody that is qualified to do that for me, by the time I was looking at the work, I just totally stopped it because it cannot pass for what I have in mind. So the quality of uh, those that are doing the work is very low. And I feel that by now that we are getting many more graduates into different sectors of uh, spheres of knowledge that are getting into Kaniwood, we'll begin to see the, the changes. This is what I want to believe. It will take some time, but it will surely come. But don't you think also that this is tied to the need I think we're, that we're facing today across, across board, not just Kamiwood now, but in all the different sectors of the film, Nigerian film industry, the need for greater professionalization. That there's a need that people be specially trained, not just that they have they have acquired degrees or they are graduates, but they're people who are trained and they take this up as a full-time profession. 
isn't this uh, is this not also part of what uh, kind of would need to give attention to yes it's a long term process it's slow but to slowly begin to ensure that in the different categories of the crew or those who work on films there's this professionalization of the things that are done absolutely i agree with you doctor and uh, this is one initiative this is the book that i edited and uh, mm -hmm. it is as a result of a a product that i promoted and the Kano state government agreed to sponsor 450 kanyawood practitioners to different training in fact six components of uh, film production camera lighting operations and then mm -hmm. scripting directing production management acting and editing so this these areas i promoted and uh, the governor of Kano State agreed to now sponsor the training, which we did over a, a three months period. And we are sure that by the time we finish with these 450 Kanyewood practitioners, one, we deep up their skill in production. Secondly, we sensitize them to appreciate the need for them to go into mentorship arrangement with people that they know can add value to what they are doing. And I think right. we have succeeded quite uh, a lot with many of them now assigning themselves to people that they know they are better than them and they are learning from that distance. Because it's not everybody that will have the opportunity to go and read in a regular school distance. My degree is radio, television, and film from Indiana State University. And I can assure you, not, not up to five of us in Kano State that have such a qualification. So it cannot be for everybody. But for those that uh, can be able to align themselves with those that can be able to mentor them, I think it's a doable project in that way. Okay. Now, Ciro brings up uh, an important aspect of it. The the financial, because he says another factor for poor subtitling is the poor payment for the service. I started but had to stop because the payment wasn't worth the service. So I think also that people having to grow the space, people also have to be willing to pay a bit more to attract those who have the qualification to do it. It's a bit of a vicious circle, isn't it? <laughs> but anyhow, okay. Let me take the question from Salisu. He says, I appreciate the presentation of my mentor, Abdul Karim Mohammed. I happen to be part of the lead actors in Galadima Soyaya Kuna Zuchi. The film was supposed to be a pace setter as far as the Kanyewood film industry is concerned. But despite all the films he mentioned, the Kanyewood industry is today in the sinking ship. Can Abdul Karim shed more light on why we are in this situation and the panacea to the present phenomenon? Okay, my, 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 my brother has, uh, has actually brought to fore a major problem that is militating against uh, Kanyewood industry. And that is the fact that uh, because Probably, I don't know, but uh, could it be the low level of education of most practitioners? There is a lot of animosity that is being generated within. So everybody tends to have a PhD without going to the university. And what do I mean by PhD? Pull him down syndrome. Once you see the next person to you has promised to get to the level where probably your capability cannot be able to get you there, then you become uh, a, a stumbling block to such a person. You become a negative force that will work against him. And this is really what is happening with the majority of the industry operators that I know, that I have come across. With. They don't have the capacity to appreciate that once any one of them is succeeding, yeah. the multiplier effect can rub on others. 
So they need to come out of that shell of seeing a successful person as a threatening person. And I think majority of them are suffering from this problem. Unless and until such a problem is addressed individually and collectively, I don't see anybody coming out of Kaniwood getting where <clears throat> the promised land is without having problems. So number one problem that I see associated with that uh, Salutu is saying. So the panakia for me will be to fight this inward inherent enmity against somebody that you see that has the potentials to grow amongst you. Once you can, you can be able to overcome this, you see yourself facilitating each other to succeed rather than fighting each other to remain where everybody is. This is, this is my take on this. Thank you. Now, what you have just said focuses very much on collaboration. And you have started, or you started way back, as far back as 1999, this thing of collaboration, because your film, Dan Adam Butulu, is said to be the first Hausa Igbo collaboration film. How did you achieve that? And what can we learn from that today? Are such collaborations still going on? Can we promote more of such collaboration? Because from what you're saying, it, seems, uh, it will benefit, really, the sector if more collaboration, more exposure to what's going on elsewhere comes up and people are willing to work with each other. True. Uh, Aikmo is the name of the producer of that Dan Adam Butulu. And uh, I saw in him a young person that is trying to invest his money into a train that he doesn't know anything about. At that time, I was the managing director of films, uh, laboratory and production services, a, a, a canoe based film production outfit that I was uh, sort of uh, commissioned to, to, to establish. And I was heading the, the place and he came in, we had facilities that he wanted to rent. And I was listening to him as I was listening to him, the willingness with which he came that he wanted to pump in his money. And I was saying, no, let me be fair to this guy. I'm not only, I shouldn't be only interested in renting out these facilities for my company to make money. Let me ensure that he succeeds. That's the beginning of the collaboration. So I volunteered to him. I have seen his budget. I told him outrightly that Aikmo, you cannot pay me because I am way beyond your budget if you want, if I am to be direct your film. But I am volunteering to direct for you. You take my production expenses because uh, in terms of movement, the, the shooting locations are in different locations in, around Kano. So I told him that he will be responsible for that. And if we are going to stay the night, he will be responsible for my accommodation. But I'm not expecting him to pay me anything out of the exercise. And that is what really brought about the, the collaboration. So he agreed and I directed the film. One, I was trying to, as much as possible, ensure that the Hausa cultural nuances are observed in the production so that he wouldn't go foul of the, this thing because it can forestall the distribution of that film. I know that. And I told him, I say, you cannot do this thing, just come in. And he was, even the major characters, he was willing to bring in uh, characters of Igbo to now act in house film. I said, no, it won't work. You are now in this locality. This is the market area you are aiming at. There are stars of that language you bring in because you feel they, they understand the language that you are going to I say it won't work. So I directed uh, that uh, collaboration towards this and we were able to now do a production that was acceptable to Kano market and using the local people that garnered uh, popularity for the film even before he went on because uh, Aikmo is a marketer. So even before the film went to the market, he saw the essence of what I have advised him to do and he was quite happy. I think he made money, but uh, 
uh, because there is no, it's a business uh, venture. Uh, I, he didn't disclose to me how much he made, but I'm sure it's turned out profitable. Now, this is a template that if we had grown, and if I were a government, when Project Act Nollywood was introduced, I would have put in a condition that there has to be these collaborative works between North and South, East and West. Because the unity of this country is so important and it can be improved upon using this medium, but the government just dash out money and turn its back, not bothering about the content, about the logistics arrangement of the protections that ought to have come out, not the interfacing of the North-South thing to, to ensure the unification of the country in the real sense of it. So th these are areas that are supposed to be given attention by any reasonable government, by any reasonable government, because this is not an industry that should be wished away. I could remember when uh, Mweke Jr. was the Minister of Information, he called some of us as stakeholders to now said to us, look, you guys, do you understand how important you are? I have been out of this country on national assignments as a minister. Once I'm introduced as a minister of this country, the next thing is, do you know Genevi? Do you know Peter Dochi? Do you know so, so, so? Nobody asked me about uh, my, my president, but they're asking me about this task. So if you have penetrated in terms of uh, your sphere of influence to such nations, we feel that you can sell this country and we are willing to work with you. And that is where the political statement ended. So I will want to see a committed Nigerian nation that will judiciously use this medium that we have and its potency for the greatness of Nigeria. I think that ties up to Kengde's question because for people to come in, we, we must have the structures. And uh, the question here is that, well, Canterwood, like other Nollywood, uh, Canterwood, like other Nollywood, is business. So how do we ensure that they are investment ready? How do we attract real investment into this industry? Because yes, the government should play a role, but I think also that, uh, like everybody has recognized, we also need to be able to attract private investors to this sector. But that depends on the kind of structures that the filmmakers themselves put in place. So how do we attract, in the words of Kane Day, real investment into this industry? Well, first and foremost, I think, is for government to provide an enabling environment. Without security, there is no foreign investor that will come and bring in investment. If there is, a, if, if, if now, uh, for whatever amount you will give me, if you are inviting me to Abuja, I will not go by road. So yeah. how about a, a foreigner? You are telling me to bring in investment into your country, but I'm restricted in terms of movement to now realize the optimum potential of my investment in your country. It doesn't make sense. You can never attract anybody if you don't have security. So this issue of security is something that we must, we must pay attention to so that we can be able to guarantee the safety of investment of these foreign investors. If we don't have that on the ground and they have information at their fingertips, nobody can be fooled in this modern day and time about this issue. So we need to do this first. No matter what infrastructure the filmmaker is going to have in the country, if the other guy you are trying to bring in does not feel safe, he will never come. So I think the starting point for me will be the security of people first. Secondly, yes, the infrastructure will help. But the infrastructure, again, if I'm going to provide my own electricity when I come in, it adds up to my cost. If I'm going to hire a private security outfit to take care of my security when I'm around, it adds up to the cost. If I don't have comfortable place, comfortable and secure to 
live when I'm around. I won't come around. So it's a, it, 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 it's a whole holistic approach that we need to have. Not a single approach. If you have infrastructure, it will, work. it will never work. These other supporting things that are critical in terms of security and in terms of electricity, even water. Because there are some, some places that you go, you, you can have uh, portable drinking water. So these are things that we must look at. And also, the tourism prospect of this country is so huge. So if you tie in this infrastructure and uh, other things that you are building with promoting tourism to attract people, because once I come in as a visitor and I feel comfortable and I'm okay, then you can be rest assured that I could be considering coming in with money to invest in whatever sector I have interest in. But without these things, I don't think it will work. So we need to strategize and look at what we mean by attracting foreign investor in a holistic sense, rather than lip service to saying we want to do this, either on paper projection or uh, paper promotion, it will not work. Very good points, very good points. Well, uh, Olusheng is asking, focusing now on training. NFI, he says, is based in JOS. What will this institution do differently to strengthen Kanyewood video film industry going forward in terms of training of Kanyewood personnel? Well, uh, I think the marketing bit, I can see some difference now in NFI because uh, they are really proactive in terms of promoting what they do and uh, who they are expecting to attract. That is number one. Number two, I think NFI needs to be proactive in terms of bringing itself out of jaws, identifying clusters that they can be able to sell their services to and doing so proactively rather than saying that you know where we are, come to us. It doesn't happen in marketing sense now of this day, modern day and times. No, it doesn't happen that way. So I believe that if NFI were autonomous, because their main problem is autonomy, period. When you have bureaucratic system taking lead in terms of what academic system should do, there will be problem. It doesn't take any rocket science for one to understand this. So as far as I'm concerned, and I'm very happy that the founding director of that institution is with us now. This is what I'm saying, Professor Ikwasi. So long as uh, NFI is not independent, is not operating as a truly academic institution that can be able to professionally package and sell its services to the clusters of production uh, places that we have in the country, it may never be as efficient as it ought to be. This is the truth. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Okay, great. Uh, well, Nasiru points out here an important aspect of that training when he says that in the case of local investors, I personally think lack of proper business plan that includes clear marketing strategy will guarantee uh, that will guarantee return on investment is a huge hindrance, uh, which is a which is a very good point, really, because the investors many times say that well, they do not see really how they are going to get their money back. Okay, so part of the trading does require this focus. But let me take you in a bit of a different direction now. You are the founder of the Kano Indigenous Languages Film Marketing Festival, KILAF. Can you tell us about this? What is it about and why did you decide to begin this festival? This festival, Dr. Ikechu, has a history behind it. I was doing my uh, attachment in KCOP channel 13 in Angeles. I was serving under my executive producer, her name is Marilyn Solomon, and her friend who happened to be at the California Senate at that time, Senator Diane E. Watson, was invited into Nigeria. She is a black American, invited into Nigeria by Chief Jung Ngobodo, who was then the 
governor of Anambra State. She had never left America in her life. So it was the first trip of that senator out of America, and she, it happened to be Nigeria. She was thoroughly overwhelmed by what she saw. So after her visit, Jim Wobodo recorded, had her visit recorded for her, and he gave her a tape saying, Senator, when you go back home, at least you can show them you are visiting to this country. She happily got back to Los Angeles and uh, invited friends and relatives over meal to now show them the video so that they can share the experience with her. Unfortunately, she played the tape and the tape could not play. Oh. She was really sad. So she came into my television station and went to her friend to now complain. So the friend now asked her, where did you say you went to? She said, Nigeria, of course. I said, but Nigeria uses for PAL, so that's why you couldn't watch it. But uh, luckily enough for you, I can change, uh, I can have it uh, dubbed for you on NTS system, and you can go back and re-invite these guys, they will see it. So she was very happy about that. Then my executive producer called the person that was going to transfer the tape to her onto NTSC. After that, she called me and said, where are you, Abdul? I said, uh, I'm in my office. Can you come over? I said, sure. So I went to her office. As I opened the door, this senator sprang up from her seat and leaped onto my body, we almost fell to the ground. And uh, I didn't understand what was happening. So my executive producer said, look, you have just uh, surprised this guy. He doesn't know why you're excited. She said, I'm excited because I've been to your country. What did you say your name is? I said, Abdul. Okay, Abdul, I've been to your country and I was really overwhelmed about how people respect their elders. And I have never known in my life that I could get into this one country that from the airport when I was picked up, visited every important person and it was black person came back, boarded plane, every person that I, I encountered was black. I never knew there was somewhere like this in the world, but your country is like that. I said, sure. So she now conscripted me into her re-election campaign. And she had important uh, uh, assignments or engagements to raise funds for her re-election into California Senate. And she will speak and say, look, guys, I have an important person that I want you to listen to how they respect their elders back in Nigeria. And I will speak to this August uh, uh, audience. And thereafter, I was interacting with the cream of the crop in Los Angeles of black persons because majority of our constituents were black. I realized that here I was a little person by able major, but there is something about me that I appreciated. And that is, I was not suffering from the hangover of slavery. And these are important guys that I could literally see they were suffering from the hangover of slavery. Because there is a disconnect between the truly Africans that they were and the Americans that they have found themselves to be. That gave me the genesis of this, uh, Indigenous Language Film Festival. Because I said to myself, if we can produce our films in our indigenous languages, so be it, we should never lose sight of who we are in the first instance. Because if we do, then we are subjecting ourselves to become the Black Americans that I have encountered. So this is the genesis of my festival. I want to promote Indigenous Language Films in Africa, and I want to reward those that are producing those films so that we can be able to motivate them to do what they are doing even better and ensure that the products that are being churned out are representative of who we truly are. This is the genesis of uh, the festival that I'm promoting. And I'm saying to myself, how can I sustain the interest that I invite to come for five days into Kano? That is why. I develop an array of activity 
that will engage people. It will be five days, five memorable days of coming into Kanu. First, we will sell the, uh, the people and culture of Kanu. Secondly, we will encourage networking amongst African filmmakers to the level where we can be able to strike for production agreements with uh, one another. And then thirdly, open a market that whoever is producing an indigenous language film can have a platform annually to come in and display these goods so that there will be inter exchange of uh, these goods and services that we can render to ourselves. And fourthly, I said, we must not lose sight of the academic synergy that we can create between filmmakers and the academia. And that is why we do a conference during the five day period. And I'm very happy to report that so far we have done many, we have done four. And these are the publications that have emerged. This is the latest publication. So everything we, we select for the conference, we make sure that we publish it to become a, a material that will be representational of us, by us, from us to anybody. Like this, the title is Improving African Content for the Global Film Market. That was the theme of our previous edition of the uh, conference. And then this is the beginning. We call it uh, Contextualizing African Indigenous Language Films. So all papers that are here are to contextualize African Indigenous Language Films as per those that attended the conference. So every year what we have set out to do, each conference that we do, there will be this publication. It will serve multiple purposes. Number one, it will be for those that are interested in filmmaking and are engaging themselves in uh, teaching uh, filmmaking in any university across the world, this is the platform to now say we are synergizing our thoughts over a topic for a time period to ensure that we come out with a publication that can be able to foster the, the, the development of those in the academia because they can use it for their promotional purposes and uh, it will serve that purpose. And lastly, what we set out to do in the tournament, the activities that we have lined up, every year that we are beginning, we are beginning with a dinner and we are ending with a dinner and then the award ceremony. So there will be this award ceremony that will be done and uh, the, the film entries that have gone into the festival will be judged and then we have winners to, to arise there from. So that's the, the whole thing about uh, the Kano Indigenous Languages uh, of Africa Film Market and festival known as Kilaf. That was a great story. Thank you very much for sharing it. Now, I have a question here from, from Tony, Professor Tony Ada, who says, let's assume I am a student interested in Kanywood. What will be your top five film recommendations? This is your must-see list for me. So top five films that anybody interested in Kanywood must see. I will begin with the historic. Though not in the Kanywood genre, but I think it has set a, a standard that I personally will wish that filmmaking process in the country, not only in Kanywood, will follow that pattern. And it's a film produced by a friend of mine uh, and directed by a friend of mine, Sadiq Tapawa Balewa. That film should be a must watch for anybody that wishes to see Kani Wood film. Why? Because the storyline is culture-based. The production quality is A-class. He produced it as a project for his master's program at the university in London. I think London, London School of uh, Oriental Studies. Or so because of the participation of a lot of students in the film, from UK, from Nigeria, 
the quality can stand for itself anywhere, anytime. So I would recommend that. So here yeah, Una Zuchi, the film by Film Corporation, is another one that I will recommend also because there has been display of professionalism by late Usman Saidu Galatima, USA Galatima, who directed the film. And I believe efforts were made to ensure that production uh, standards were followed in the process. Now, coming back to Mansur, because Mansur is the project of Alinuhu that grows the highest uh, ticket sale in film house. And Kene is there to corroborate. He's saying that the highest grossing film of Nigeria as at that time. So whatever, I have not even seen it, but whatever made it to, to, to be the highest grossing distance will be a motivation for one to, to see it. Now, the film, I went to South Korea and uh, the ambassador of Nigeria to South Korea said to me that he never knew that Nollywood can attract foreigners to the level that that film up north was screened in Korean Film Week. The very week I went to South Korea, it was screened there. And he said to me from the time that it was screened, Nigerian mission was inundated with a request to reshow the film and he had to arrange for that. So whatever uh, motivated uh, that uh, influx of interest, I think is something that uh, should be worth the while for somebody that will want to gauge the pulse of Kanyewood to, to, to watch that film. Incidentally, I gave the governor, the then governor of Bauchi State, we met in Morocco and shared a room. He has been my friend. So we shared a, a hotel and I was telling him how he can turn because I was in the Ankari Game Reserve for a function and I appreciated the development he had introduced there. He, he loves golf. He has created golf course there, airstrip for people to get in there. And I was telling him the best way he can sell that place is to ensure that he get a storyline of any African uh, Nollywood film to interject the, 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 the place, the facilities that can be enjoyed into the storyline. And up north, incidentally, as if the producer knew that I have given that governor that advice, she's that this thing to talk to him and he keyed into the project. He even acted in that one. So that is the kind of uh, thing that I think if we synergize between what government can be able to do to create an enabling environment for the filmmakers and for the filmmakers to know how they can key into governmental advantages that will promote what they are doing, you know, it will work well. So that's number four. Number five, I think it will be uh, a film that, uh, oh, what's the name of this film? It's done by one of the upcoming filmmakers here, Emei is he's, he's the, 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 the guy that is controlling cinema screening of Kanye Wood. He has made a film, I can't remember the name of the film, but I think it's one film that uh, one should be able to, to, to watch because he seems to have what it takes to take Kanye Wood into cinema circuit because he has been successful in screening his films and he's always getting more people to go in to watch. So he will be an interesting subject to, to, to understudy and see how to uh, appreciate Kanye Wood from his own vintage position. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for those suggestions. Now, uh, Lucheng is interested in getting the books that you've been showing us. You've shown us quite a few books this morning and he's interested in them and is asking where can he find them? Nasiru makes a suggestion that you can send the books to the Nollywood Studies Center so that people can have easy access. But anyway, I leave that to you to respond to how Lucio can get the books. 
Well, since uh, Dr. Ikechuku is with me this morning, let me seize the opportunity to say that if he obliged me that I will be able to subscribe to your center and then that, they, will, they will pick up from there. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We can, we, we can organize that. We can work that out. Okay. okay, then one last question. Our time is up really, but let's take the question of Oluranti before we go. He says, good job on the festival of that. What kind of support do you get? Government or private? Is he talking about me personally? No, this is for your for the festival. Do you receive any support for the festival? Are you receiving government support for the festival or is it dependent solely on private funding? Honestly, it's my own fund because I, I am a passionate artist and uh, most of us suffer from this uh, problem of uh, once you have an idea that you have incubated, you want to see it through. For the last four years, I can tell you, NBC promised me 200,000 Naira. It, uh, it has yet to hit the account. The Kano state government, where this thing is happening, promised me 2 million Naira. This is two years ago. It is yet to hit the account. Sponsorships, we've been trying left, right, and center the Nigerian factor has caught up with us because we, <laughs> we are not in government and we cannot uh, facilitate somebody uh, to get something. So it's been really tough. So we are open for any person that feels that we can be able to package us for sponsorships that, because that's our drive. Once we, we, we can get sponsorships, I think we can be able to improve on what we are doing. But right now, honestly, is 100% my fund that goes into the project. Well, wow. one must say to you then, congratulations. To keep it running for four years, solely self-funded, is a pretty challenging thing to do. Congratulations. It's a, it's a very good project to do. Well, our time is up. We would have loved to carry on. I, have, I had hoped to talk to you also about Mopan, but well, we don't have any time anymore. So it means we'll have to invite you another time to carry on where, we, where this conversation is ending today. Well... Thank you so much, al Haji Mohammed. You and I have been in contact for a while, yeah. and um, it's always been it's always been very refreshing because you're always so welcoming. So thank you so thank much, you. and thank you, thank you to our, our audience. The recording will be put in our YouTube channel for those who want to follow up. I think al Haji Mohammed has told us so many very interesting things about Kaniwood. Yeah, so it's still let's. Let's get to know more about this important sector and see, well, how we also can help to project what he is doing. So thank you all very much once again, and do have a very good day.